What does this have to do with this? Stay tuned and enjoy the video. All right guys, so what we're going to do today is create the finish on a countertop that our students construct when they come to our pro class. And so we're gonna have two different edges that we're gonna show you. Also what we've done is we have put two pieces of the MDF and we have a seam and we have glued the seam and done the bondo and sanded it so that it's very smooth and ready to go to the next step. If you're interested in knowing how we do the seams, we'll put a link to that video in the description of this video. All right, so we are going over MDF. Let me show you the edges that we have on this MDF. All right, so the first edge we have is our rock edge. And the rock edges that we do, um, we're very, very happy with our rock edges. We've never had any issues with failure or chipping. And the secret to that is we don't use a lot of Bondo. We use just enough to create that texture. We get our textured rock edge prior to our Bondo by using a uh, carving disc. And I'll have that carving disc link in the description below as well. Also, if you would like to get a really good tutorial on our rock edges, I'll post that link as well. Um, but when we do Bondo, we use just enough of that Bondo to create the illusion of a rock. We're not using that Bondo uh, in big, uh, large amounts. We're just using the right amount. And we're gonna have a kitty come join our video. <laughs> All right, so on our smooth edges, whoa, go, go. All right, so our smooth edge, we create by taking our three-quarter MDF, which is what we use, and putting another piece of three-quarter MDF, giving an illusion that we have an inch and a half drop. So we have a seam where the two pieces are put together. We'll put just the right amount of Bondo. We'll come over and sand it very smooth, and it gives a beautiful, smooth edge. So I'm gonna have this edge look more like a wood grain and our rock edge is gonna look more like a piece of bark. All right, so I wanted to say one thing prior to moving forward about creating a rock edge on a laminate countertop. We don't recommend that you go directly over the facing of the countertop because it's a very slick surface. We recommend that you take that facing off then use a uh, grinding tool, a, a carving disc, whatever that you have that would be uh, strong enough to go in there and create the rock edge prior to the Bondo, then come in with the right amount of Bondo to create that texture, because that's what you're going for in any seam that you may be trying to cover up once that facing comes off. Now, as far as going over a granite, countertop or a natural stone countertop, we don't recommend that you do a rock edge unless you have the correct tools that will get in there and grind that edge and create a really good surface for that Bondo to ed, uh, have good adhesion with. So that's just our recommendations. We have never had a rock edge fail in any of our countertops. Let's get started. What we're gonna try to create here is a countertop that looks like it's been mitered together instead of all the grain pattern going in one direction. Meaning I'm going to take my tool and if I wanted it all to go in one direction, I would just drag my tool and then I would continue that linear pattern across this way. But what I want to do is I want to bring my linear pattern both ways and then make it look like it was actually a miter cut here and the pieces were put together. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna tape off our edge to give the illusion of the wood where it's gonna be mitered together. All right, so this side of the tape is gonna be our faux miter cut line right here. Now what I've done prior to getting started is uh, we have sanded this with 220, created a little bit of a tooth, made sure it's clean, and we're ready to go. Now, if you are doing this over a laminate 
or a natural stone or any slick, non-porous uh, surface, it is imperative, guys, that you prep your countertops correctly. Uh, if you're doing an on-site pour, what you'll need to do is uh, most likely it's going to be a laminate or a granite or marble type natural stone. You want to come down here and you want to sand uh, with at least a 120 grit and really create a tooth for the product that we're going to apply to really grab a hold of. Uh, I highly suggest that you come over the top if you're going over laminate or natural stone with a very, very high quality bonding primer first. We use XIM. Uh, it is available on our website. It's all also available on Amazon. And it is a fabulous product. I've used it for 20 years in my faux finishing business. And it really does a great job at giving a uh, good adhesion. Remember, our finish is only going to be as good as our first layer. If our first layer fails and delaminates, Everything on top of it, no matter how pretty it is, it's going to fail. So we want to make sure that every step of our prep is correct and um, done properly so that we will have a beautiful finish on the end. So since I'm going over it with MDF, I don't need to put that bonding primer. The product that I use, I've used for years. I get it from Artistic Painting Studio. It's uh, Jennifer Ferguson's Artsyville line, and it is an amazing product. I'll also have those links in the description. Now, all I'm doing is coming over with a faux finishing texture medium. It's very, very durable. I do not recommend uh, using a wall mud, uh, sheetrock mud. Uh, it's good for creating some fun designs, but it's not meant to be held up on high traffic areas. All right, so what we're gonna do coming in first, we're just gonna start laying this product down. Thin is the name of the game on this finish, guys. I've got a little something dry in there. There it is. All right. So right now I'm not really worried what it looks like. I just wanna get that product on my surface. Now with the Artsyville line, you have plenty of open time. I'm actually out in our woodworking area of our shop. So it's pretty warm here. Uh, we're down here in Texas. So it's been about in the, I guess, 90s today. It started to cool off. We're probably in the high 80s right now. So I know this texture medium is going to dry probably in a good 45 minutes and be ready to go to the next step. But I'm just getting it laid out. Now, being that I'm outside and it's a little warmer than what it normally is in our shop, I'm gonna come in with some water and I'm just gonna mist and just kind of keep my surface a little bit moist. And it's just really easy to work with when you do that. Now, I'm not worried about my rock edge too much right now because I've already got texture on that edge and I'm not too worried about putting any more on there. Now, if you're doing a really large countertop, um, I highly recommend that you use your water, water bottle to help keep that medium nice and moist. As I use that trial, just kind of keep it at a nice 45 degree angle. Not putting a ton of pressure. I'm just putting even pressure so that I get an even coat. All right, now that I have it covered, now I'm gonna come back and just make sure that I have a pretty even coat or layer anywhere that I may see some bare areas. I'll put a little bit of product there. All right, so now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go around the other side, work on my rock edge a little bit. I'm just gonna take my hand and I'm almost really just gonna kind of take that texture medium, go back over my rock edge, 
I'm really not worried because all I'm doing is just creating a really cool texture. I'm gonna take my decorative roller. This is a wood grain roller. I'll make sure that I put the link to these rollers in the description as well. I am gonna go ahead and very lightly mist with water. And this misting bottle is a bottle that I got off Amazon. It's, it's not a spray bottle. It, it releases a very, very, very fine mist. Okay, here we go. Here's the fun part. I'm gonna start along this edge. And what I will look, I look at my edge of the roller and that's what helps me to keep it going straight. I don't put a ton of pressure. I just kinda go nice and easy. And you can see how it's creating that wood pattern. Now if I wanna make my grain to have like a stretch of a knot, I'll just hold my roller and then I can let it go and really create a very authentic looking wood grain. Again, I'm not worried about it being perfect. I'm not worried about any imperfections here. We're gonna be able to sand this once we put our glazes. You'll never see any of this. Now, I'm just gonna go back over and I am gonna overlap just a little bit and then drag and then roll. And like I said, you don't have to have a lot of the texture medium on top. I'm a little, I'm just gonna go right back over there. You'll never see it. And I'll bring it. You'll never see any of this overlap. Like I said, once we go to sanding it and painting it and glazing it, you'll never see it. All I need is enough texture medium on there to leave a very slight indention for my, my uh, glazes to grab a hold of. All right, I'm gonna go over this last one. And now I have a beautiful, nice, straight edge. I'll let this dry. It's already starting to dry because I'm out here in the heat. Good 20 minutes. I'll come and then tape this side and I'll do the same thing. And then it'll look like two pieces of wood has been mitered together. All right, so let this dry and I'll be back in a minute. We've let this dry. Now I'm gonna come in and tape off again so that we can create this side. And then we'll just do the same thing here. Now, since we are pretty warm outside, I'm going to dampen my substrate just a little bit to help from getting my texture medium quite so dry. And I'm just doing a very, very light misting of that. Now what I'll do, I'll come in and I'll take my edges. And because I don't want a super smooth edge, I like to really just do it with my hands. I'm gonna take that lip, any amount of product that I have that's too much, I'll just bring it and use it on my edge. Cover my edge, use my hand, and I can actually almost make a striation with my fingers. I'm not really worried about too much being on top, because I'm gonna be sanding this down once it's dry. Some more product. This is a water-based material. Very, very safe, cleans up with warm soap and water, zero VOCs. Very, very, very safe to use. That's why I don't worry about using it on my hands. Those of you that watch a lot of my videos, you know that I love to use my hands to create. All right, we don't have to have it thick at all. I'm just thick enough to create that illusion. I'm gonna run my fingers now and kind of just create some texture on that edge. Like I said, I'm gonna come in with my sander. 
I'll sand off at the top where I may have a little bit too much material once it dries. All right, so we're gonna let this dry a few hours to get it really dry that all the moisture is out. Then we'll come back and we will paint it so that it'll be the whatever base color we wanna do our wood. I haven't decided what color I wanna paint it yet. So stay tuned and you'll see. Okay, so it's dry. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come and I'm gonna sand down all of the really high points. This texture medium uh, can get some really sharp edges uh, if it's really thick when you put it on and after you roll your roller through it, it could leave some really sharp points. So I'm just gonna kinda sand all of that down nice and smooth. So all I need to do when I'm sanding this down is to leave enough texture on the surface so that when I get ready to glaze it, those glazes have a little low areas to sit in. On my edges, all I'm gonna do is come in and give a nice smooth edge so that epoxy, when we get ready to do uh, that step, will roll over nice and easy. On my rock edge, I'm just knocking off anything that may be loose. I really want that texture, so I'm not gonna get too aggressive. All right, guys, so the texture medium was dry enough to sand, but I'm gonna give it another 10 hours to ensure that all the moisture is out before we go to the next step, which will be painting. So next week, I'm gonna show you how to take this to this. All right, so your homework is to let me know in the comments below, what sort of finish would you like to see? A dark finish, a light finish, an exotic finish? You let us know. Until then guys, check out our website, rk3designs.com. We have a full line of stone coat countertop epoxy products and supplies. Also check out the link in the description where we will show you where to get all of these faux finishing products at Artistic Painting Studio. Give us a thumbs up if you think we did a good job. Also subscribe to our channel. That way you guys will know every single time we post a video. And remember guys, next week, we're gonna finish up this project. But until then, remember, don't be scared, move forward and be creative.